In the days since Prince's passing, we've heard numerous stories of how he always made it a point to work with and help local musicians, including one group that is famous in its own right, Minnesota's Grammy award-winning Sounds of Blackness. Uh, a clip actually from the BBC who was here covering the passing of Prince and they went to a rehearsal for Sounds of Blackness and they were singing Purple Rain. Uh, joining us now is the musical director of Sounds of Blackness, Gary Hines. Gary, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me on behalf of Sounds of Blackness, Esme. Absolutely. I want to let, ask you, and you knew Prince for 40 years. Yes. Uh, going back to when he was a very young man, you were a very young man. I do have to ask you about these reports um, you know, suggesting that uh, his his health failings and perhaps even mm -hmm. his death was connected to some kind of a drug overdose, an opiate mm -hmm. overdose. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about this before. You said this is a man who didn't do drugs, who was very healthy. Tell us about his lifestyle. Absolutely. At Paisley Park, uh, Esme, uh, you could not even have meat in the building, no smoking, no drinking, uh, no drugs of any kind. And he lived that lifestyle and kept in impeccable health. So um, for me, that's... Uh, not a reality as far as Prince goes. All right, let's talk about how he was feeling. We have a little bit of video from his last concert in April. It's not a professional video, but it mm -hmm. appears to show him leaving the stage almost very slowly, almost limping. It looks like he might have a cane. Was he having trouble or was he in pain or having trouble getting around? It happens to all of us as we get older. Right, he'd had some, uh, some hip surgery and all that and always kept so active, uh, but never slowed down. Okay, let's talk about uh, when you first met Prince because he was in mm -hmm. junior high mm -hmm. and he wasn't, you told me he was already famous not just for his being a music prodigy but for something else. Absolutely, um, a great basketball player. Uh, standout uh, not only at Bryant Junior High School in South Minneapolis, but uh, Minneapolis Central, home of the Pioneers. He was very, very proud of that, being a standout on the varsity basketball team. Loved sports, basketball at the top of the lift, uh, loved the Vikings and purple, uh, as we know. And, and tell us about uh, him as a basketball player, because he was 5'2", he was tiny. Mm -hmm. what, what was he, just one of these little fast kids that Got, got through places? Well, think of uh, tiny Nate Archibald and, and the NBA. Um, he just had the, the skills uh, and the fundamentals were so strong. And uh, he would challenge you, whether it was a game of horse, uh, and you would think because you were taller than him that you would prevail. Not so. All right. <laughs> he, uh, share with us uh, the story of collaborating with, with Prince a, a, a few years ago. It turned out to be part of a soundtrack for a very big movie. But you didn't know that at the time. Tell us what happened. <laughs> Well, it was uh, Halloween, and uh, he had given me a call, and uh, he and I talked frequently, and this time he said uh, he wanted us to be a, a part of a really major project, but he couldn't give me all the details. So at the time, it, we didn't even know that we were working on the Batman soundtrack. Uh, he thought the session would go about an hour or two. Uh, of course, we were there all night. Um, but it was a joy and an honor. Uh, Sheila E. Um, also was at the, uh, at the desk in the, uh, in the recording studio. And uh, it was a very creative and collaborative and just a joy-filled evening. But, and was that, was that kind of typical of something that Prince would do? Say, hey, this is a big project, but wouldn't yes. let you know? Um, no, he usually would let you know. I think at the time that, that uh, his involvement with the soundtrack and everything, the details about the movie were so uh, secret until they wanted to um, go ahead and let the public know. Um, but he let us know shortly thereafter. Okay, and that must have been a pretty good feeling for you guys. It was. We were very excited. All right, um, tell us about his style of collaboration. Um, it doesn't sound like this was a nine-to-five guy. Tell us about, <laughs> you know, when, when you'd get the calls or when you would work with him and how long sessions lasted, that kind of thing. Uh, Prince was a 24-7 guy and uh, sometimes go two, three days um, between performing, rehearsing, recording, composing, uh, just nonstop, just that energy and vitality. He always had clear ideas about what he wanted to do, Esme, but was also open to collaboration and often uh, would solicit uh, ideas and uh, ask for input in the creative process. All right, and, and you mentioned about when those phone calls would come. When, mm -hmm. when would Prince give you a <laughs> shout out, Gary? Frequently, Esme, he would call at uh, two or three in the morning and uh, with the feeling that it was noon in the middle of the day and uh, you know I almost always know that it was him and uh, the conversations were always heartfelt 
Um, he would talk a lot about his faith, about his walk with God, about people, about the situation in the world, about the situation of African Americans, a lot of things that were non-musical. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, Gary Hines, uh, it is a pleasure. We have a link to your new single on our website. It's called Royalty. And uh, your, your group is so fabulous. And Thank obviously, I, my condolences, because I know you've lost a friend. Yes, absolutely. And we're, we're dedicating royalty to him because he is royalty. All right, absolutely. Gary Hines, thank you so much. Thank you, Esme.